Welcome back, everyone. I hope you all are enjoying this evening, and I hope you enjoyed dinner and that fabulous performance. How about another round of applause? I am so pleased to be here tonight in celebration of all that SAGE does in support of our elders, and I am thrilled to have the honor to present the Paula Edelbrick Community Service Award to my wonderful friend, Lori Peter. During her tenure as a uh, SAGE board member, and I will say that you're very much missed, Lori, uh, Lori was a strong leader in supporting SAGE's efforts to develop and execute a plan to expand the focus, the capabilities, and the programs to best serve our LGBTQ plus elders now and in the future. And at the height of the pandemic, Lori and her wife, Betsy Bernard, provided substantial support for the SAGE Care program. They recognized the increased need for home care during this time, and their support ensured that providers were there to treat our elders with the respect and dignity they deserve. Those that know Lori, and these two tables know Lori very well, many people from New Jersey know Lori very well. <laughs> uh, those that know Lori know that she always, always looks for places where she can help. She started her career as a social worker and counselor and went on to work very hard in support of LGBT, LGBTQ plus equality on behalf of those with HIV AIDS, communities in need of the basic resource of clean water, women, women dealing with domestic violence in our shared home state of New Jersey, of course our LGBTQ elders, and counseling queer youth. The poet Mary Oliver famously wrote in her poem, The Summer Day, what will you do with your one wild and precious life? Those of us who are lucky enough to know Lori know that her answer is caring, serving, and making a difference. Please join me in welcoming Lori Peter to the stage to accept the Paula Edelbrick Community Service Award. Well, good evening, and thank you, Barbara. Michael Adams, the SAGE Board of Directors, SAGE staff, and my wonderful wife, Betsy. SAGE was founded nearly 45 years ago by two activists who recognized that LGBTQ elders experiencing discrimination and invisibility deserved better. SAGE affirms and honors the sacrifices of our elders who have cleared the path for us. Through the decades, SAGE has been at the forefront of prioritizing the needs of our LGBTQ elders to address and prevent isolation, depression, discrimination, and irrelevancy. SAGE celebrates the breadth of diversity and the wisdom of our elders. And SAGE provides a myriad of national advocacy programs and services. An example is SAGE Cares, dedicated to ensuring our seniors have access to culturally competent, inclusive, and welcoming environments, whether that is at home or in an acute long-term health care center. This means not being harassed or forced back into the closet. Years ago, a hospital colleague said to me, nothing happens till it happens to you. And often people don't fully engage or understand an issue until they or someone they care about is personally impacted. But let's not wait until an issue directly impacts us or those we love before engaging. Our elders need visibility and opportunities to tell their stories. And I want to hear these stories, as I do on a weekly phone visit with my friend, SAGE constituent and activist, Ellen, who is here tonight.
Thank you. Ellen is 90 years young, and we have talked weekly since March 2020 through a program called Sage Connect. And Ellen is as appalled as am I at the more than 730 anti-LGBTQ plus bills proposed in several state legislatures. Bills and laws that aim to shut down decades of forward progress toward a more just society for our community. I hope this evening inspires all of us to either start or continue to support this vital mission of providing advocacy and services for our elders. In closing, I thank Sage for this recognition and all of you for supporting our elders and the critical mission of SAGE. Thank you.